Um, I really, I really need to rewrite that because that's, it's all like. It's all messed up. So what are we starting with? Nine ways to come up with great business ideas. That's what I'm gonna share in this video. But maybe you're in a position where you're working nine to five and you're like, I wanna do something but I don't know the right ideas to work on. Or you might have a bunch of ideas but I feel like maybe they're not the right ones and I need to figure out if there's other strategies to come up with even more. That's what I'm gonna cover in this video. You know, When I was getting going, 17 years old, wanting to be an entrepreneur, and I, I guess my motivation was really like, I just didn't feel like I was gonna be employable. Like I didn't think anybody would wanna have me around. I had to come up with ideas. And this is truthfully the first business idea, and I, and I say it in air quotes because um, I'm not sure it was very legal and it was definitely, but it made money. So that's, that's my filter, that it was a product I built that people paid for and it was a simple idea. It was, you know, back in the day when I was starting off, I had a computer and I had a DVD burner or a CD burner and a lot of friends would come over to look at my list of music that I had purchased legally online and create their mix CD for their girlfriend, you know, whatever, and it was just like, frustrating that they would be in my house on my computer doing this process of going through hundreds of songs and making those lists to eventually burn. So what I did is I said, look, there's got to be a better way. I'm going to instead create a simple application, a simple tool that sits on their computer that connects up to the internet, downloads all the songs that I have with the length they are, because really it was like, okay, how many songs can I put for the amount of space on the CD? and it would let them create their playlist, and then when they were done, it would send over the order in 20 bucks. Well, it didn't take the money. They just gave me the cash when I gave them the CD. That was the first product or idea I ever came up with, and it was really just solving my own problem. And a lot of you guys are saying, well, I'm not technical, Dan. I could never build something like that. These ideas, these strategies I'm gonna share with you, nine different ones, is to give you the opportunity to just be creative. Think about different industries. Think about your skills, how those could be applied. Um, talking to the right people to get more ideas. That's what we're gonna cover. So the first one is um, talk to customers. I think that there's a difference of just asking your friends, is this a good idea? Versus going to the mall and seeing somebody walk out of a store and just say, hey, do you have a few minutes? I'd love to talk to you about this um, industry, this problem, this, this purchase you just made. And yeah, some people can be like, I'm too busy, I can't talk to you. But you'd be surprised how many people be like, yeah, you know, what, 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 how can I answer your questions? And you can do the same thing at the farmer's market. Go to the farmer's market, stand at the door. People go in, they walk out with product, and you go like, do you, do you mind if I ask a few questions about you know, the vegetables you just bought? I'm thinking of starting this new kind of food truck for organic vegetables, whatever it is. But you talk to real people that have spent money. Here's why, is those people are qualified. You know, they've actually proven they had the problem, spent the money, and now you're getting their advice on how could that process have been easier for you. So talk to paying customers, not to people just asking for good ideas. Second one is mix and match. Okay, now this is gonna sound crazy because again, this is not just for software entrepreneurs, and that's my background. This is for anybody. Just go to the hardware store and look at the different, you know, look on look in an aisle and say, is there an opportunity to take this product and mix it with something else? And you're going, really, Dan, that's the idea. Um, I still remember the first time I saw a nightlight that also had a USB charger built into it. Right? You go look on Kickstarter, uh, a site for crowdfunding different business ideas, and there are so many examples of taking two or three different use cases and putting them together into one physical product. So I call that the mix and match. And really, these strategies I'm sharing with you is just to get the juices flowing, to be more creative, to, to be the idea person, so it's not about like, you know, I only have one idea or I have no ideas. It's I've got dozens, 20s, 30 different things that I think could be an opportunity. Then it's to, to filter them down into the right one. Right now, we're just talking about volume, not quality. Um, the next one is interview big companies. Here's the reasoning behind that is big companies usually plan their year uh, or their strategies, their work for the next 16 months, two years, right? So they have that kind of vision of what their challenges are today, what they're gonna build in the future. And if you talk to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different big companies, you might start to see patterns. And first thing the people do when I share that strategy, they go, well, Dan, why would a big company talk to me? Pretend you're a journalist, maybe make it real. You could reach out to them and say, hey, I'm working on this blog post for this media outlet. 
and I'd love to ask you about your marketing strategies, the way you execute your sales strategy. Maybe it's the way you manage your infrastructure. Maybe it's the way you buy a certain type of product. And at the end of it, I'm gonna put together the research and then publish it, but I'm also gonna give you first access to it. That's a great way to actually learn from a big company. So before you dismiss it, that's the approach. And yeah, some of them are gonna say no, they're not gonna respond, but the ones that do are gonna give you a gold mine of information to come up with really neat ideas for a, a business idea that you could pursue. The next one is searching online. When I think of you know, uh, great ideas, usually people have the pain and they're asking their friends online about a solution. So you could act, check this out, on Twitter, just search the term, is there an app for, in double quotes, on the search, and you will see a bunch of tweets of people asking for different apps for different pains that they're having in their life. I mean, you could use an advanced search operator on Google for forums. So forums is a place where people go and talk about different topics from cars to do-it-yourself home stuff to you know, food. And you can actually search just the forums to see if anybody's talking about the pain or idea that you might be having to see if there's anything else that might come up. Searching online, blog posts, comments using Discuss. Uh, there's an endless. Going on Quora, which is a Q&A you know, question and answer site, Endless, endless opportunity for you to look at people talking about real pains in their life and, and also see how people have solved them to see if there's an opportunity for you to build a business around it. The next one is to me asking what's next. You know, I come from the technology world and innovation, but this is true for any industry, right? Wherever you're at, you can look and say, what's next? What's coming next? You could do the research on that. You know, in the software world, there's a, a presentation given every year by a woman named Mary Meeker that talks about the internet trends. And in that presentation, she shows the research, the data, the trend lines on exactly what's coming over the next 15, 50 years. And you can easily plot and say, oh yeah, I could see how that could be a big thing. And again, we're just looking for quantity of ideas. It could just give you a bunch of different um, areas to then investigate deeper. So asking yourself what next, I think is really big. The next one is your frustrations, okay? Now, if you are a happy Zen person that never gets frustrated with anybody and you're happy all the time, this one's gonna be tough because I'm gonna ask you to turn on your frustration radar where you start thinking about when you're out and you're maybe getting a car wash or paying for a bill with some friends or you know, um, you know, picking up a, a new product to solve a problem at your house, whatever it is, um, just write these ideas down. You know, James Altucher is, is famous for you know, sharing his strategy of every day writing down 10 different ideas for himself and for other people that he cares about, advisors, mentors, et cetera, and just sharing those ideas with them so he starts working that idea muscle. And I think that the best place to start is your frustration. So that's, that's a big strategy. The next one is new field, same skills. Here's how that works is you probably have a skill. Maybe you're a designer, maybe you're, um, you know, you're a manager, maybe you're a marketer, and there's probably other industries or fields of study that you could apply your skills to that don't really have a lot of new ideas around that, and you could just start talking to those industries with your existing skill set and domain expertise to see if there's ideas for a business in there. So I like that one a lot. And then the other one is industries with no innovation. You know, my brother comes from the construction, construction industry, so he started and there was literally, it was building a house was still done the way it had been done 50 years prior. And what he did is brought a lot of innovation, both in how he operated and he managed the, 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 the list of contractors and subcontractors uh, and his team, but also the way he communicated and he sold to customers. So I think there's a great opportunity of just looking and asking yourself, what are the, the, the slowest growing innovative industries and how can we bring a bit of um, um, new innovation to those sectors? I think that's a great opportunity. The next one, um, I think that's just a big idea is cheaper versions of something that's existing. You know, if you look at Uber, which is now a $90 billion company, um, if you don't know what that is, it's probably because it's been you know, kicked out of your city. But it's uh, ordering you know, a car on demand. It's, it's kind of like a taxi app. But you know, their vision was always to make it cheaper than taking public transportation. Yes, it started with black cars, then it went to UberX, but now they're doing Uber Pool, which is showing, um, teaching people a new behavior where you're sharing you know, the, the taxi or the car with other people you know, that are going in the same destination. But cheaper versions of more expensive options today, there's a lot of companies that do that. I mean, a lot of innovation, I would argue, starts there, where it's, it's cheaper than the existing incumbent, 
but, and a lot of people dismiss it because it's almost like, like not real and it doesn't have the real big features that this thing has, it's not robust, but over time it keeps iterating, iterating, and getting better, better, and better, and eventually disrupts it. So cheaper versions of something existing. And the last one that I have for you is finding a new growth niche. You know, uh, one of my favorite examples, I mean, look at yoga back in the day with Lululemon. Lululemon was like, okay, we wanna make um, clothing that is for active and day wear, so it's not just like I, I wear it to go to the gym. And they, they kind of looked at yoga, yoga's new kind of ascension in the market and said, we wanna be the, the clothing for the yoga studios. And sure, people bought it that never, never ever did yoga. Same thing with CrossFit, right? CrossFit is this, this crazy movement in the fitness and health space that's grown like almost double every year. And if you have, let's say a booking software or a supplement or even a t-shirt or um, kettlebells or whatever it is, and you, you know, kind of tag on to the CrossFit, that's a huge opportunity for great new ideas. So that, those nine ones that I share with you today is really for quantity, not quality. In another video, I'm gonna share with you guys how to go through the ideas that you might have and figure out the best ones to pursue. You know, I wanna invite you guys to subscribe to my newsletter. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business. And I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get other tips on how to start and scale your business. I also have a free newsletter where I share training videos, exclusive invites to events, and also community contests. And if you want more information right now and content, check out these couple videos, and I'll see you next week.